Gray County. County Life at home this week on Rogers TV. Welcome to Mr. Charlie this week and Miss Mary Jane. Hello, Mary Jane. How are you this week? Oh, well, I'm good. And and it's lovely to see you and Charlie. And we are back on Zoom just for the winter months, uh, just to keep uh, everyone safe. And it, it can be very convenient for our guests so they don't have to travel. Although, we don't have any snow right now, um, but anyway. Don't say that, Mary Jane. Don't say that out loud. For goodness sakes, we're going to have a blizzard on the weekend. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. But we're going to take this first um, eight minutes that you and I usually have to chat, and we're going to share it with a, with a guest, our special guest, um, May F. And she is going to be talking to us about the Chinese New Year. And it's called um, Gray Bruce Lunar New Year Celebrations. And there's a lot of them. So welcome, May. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mary Jane and Rhonda. And uh, thank you for squeezing me into your, your precious eight minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we were saying, May, that your outfit is really, really lovely. Can you tell us about it at all? Well, it is it's, it's something that I only wear like two times a year in special occasions. So usually is when when we do this uh, Lunar New Year celebration. But but as you know, the past two years, um, a lot of things were on hold, right? So I didn't get a chance to wear that. So this year, I got to put it, take it out again. So this is, this is like... Um, the, the like the the color the the color is very very um traditional um uh, Chinese color and also I have those I think they call this frog button, so it is uh it's made of a, a textile so it's pretty pretty um challenging pretty challenging to 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 do do up but but it looks elegant I guess <laughs> yes, yes. beautiful beautiful yeah. rich color thank you. So tell us about the events that are coming up, um, because I believe the new year, it's the year of the rabbit, and I'm not mm -hmm. sure what that means, um, mm -hmm. but it starts, I believe, January 22nd. So tell us more about the year of the rabbit and the events that are coming up. Okay, so I think I will talk a bit about the, the event first. And uh, so so this year, we, as I say, after two years laying low, we are going to be in person again. And it is really, really exciting because um, we not only that we are going to be in person, we have only we are also have some new new partners joining us. So um, the, the first event actually kicked off earlier than the 22nd so so chinese uh, lunar new year is on the 22nd so that is our new year's day but this year we 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 are the all the celebration events spread from middle of july to the beginning of february thanks to all the communicate the, the community partners so to kick off our events was a was is the um community arch peace curation uh which is uh hosted by our new partner georgian bay arts Georgian Bay Center for the Arts. So, so Raquel Yang, who is a, a local artist, she'll be. <laughs> I think everybody know Raquel. Um, so she she's going. To, she organize. She's organizing this uh, this community art piece creation. Um, what she did is we she she found a very nice um, Chinese textile and she has uh, made a. Use, she used some material to make a shape, the outline of a rabbit. So, so from uh, the uh, January fifteenth to to the twenty uh, seventh, people are welcome to drop by the Georgian Bay Center for the Arts to 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 add to the uh, the rabbit. And then on the twenty seventh, that piece is going to be transported to the the Tom Thompson Art Gallery, which is another partner, and they will they will hang that up on the twenty eighth for for a um, uh, period of time. And speaking of Tom Thompson Art Gallery. They also have some some uh, activity 
is happening and in their lobby um, for people to 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 help with the celebration. So that's another partner. And then of course the library. The library is having their their events on the twenty first to bring in the new year. So so they have a lot of activities uh, for all ages on the youth floors. Uh, so so hopefully you uh, people will have time to drop by. And then um, and then next up next will be the um, our annual art show. So the art show has, has started in 2015. It's been going for for many years. And, and that the show that is the only thing that didn't really stop through the through the pandemic. Thanks to Raquel again because she's also the the organizer of the annual art show so of course this year is called the um, year of the rabbit art show and it, it it goes from it runs from january 25th to february 25th in four different uh, venues in downtown Owen Sound. So the first one and the main venue is Gray Gallery, who is also our, our partner. Um, and then we have the artist co-op, the Georgian Bay Center for the Art, and also the Upward, Upward Art Studio. So in four different venues and many, many, many pieces from local artists, and it's all around the rabbit. So it would be interesting. And I'm already seeing some of the artwork being posted on Facebook. And so it's really exciting to see. And then uh, on the 27th, another another new activity, and, and it's hosted by the Owen Sound, um, uh, Owen Sound Hub at their community incubator on on, uh, on 10th Street. So it is a, uh, it is a, um, an introduction to Poo Er Tea with Matthew Hayes. So Poo Er Tea is a, is a kind of Chinese tea and Apparently, Matthew has been drinking and studying everything about poor tea for a long time. So, so he he actually reached out to us and say, "Hey, can I do this?" And I said, "Yes, of course." So, because we want people to, we want to engage people to celebrate with us. So, so that is on the twenty seventh at the incubator. Yeah, and you have a question. Well, um, is there something happening at the Meaford Library and the Southgate Library? Yeah, yeah. So, so it, 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 it is coming. Okay. So, so on the on the Southgate Library, it's they actually they start on the on the twenty seventh, twenty second, on right on the New Year's on on New Year's Day through to February fifth. So they will have all different kinds of activities and 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 um, I think some display for all ages. So this is our new partner. So I, I'm really happy. And me for library again is on the 27th, on the 29th, the Sunday, and and I will be doing a um, um, festive craft and chat with adults. So I'll be showing people how to use a uh, red packet to make um, make uh, crafts. And and then of course we also we also we also have at Grey Root on the twenty on the twenty eighth Saturday. I'm looking at my poster now. So Grey Root in the morning we have we have um, activities and presentations and yeah so it's it's exciting. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit Rogers.com for more details. It's about sharing and caring. It's about doing and belonging. It's about living life to its fullest. And it's about laughing out loud. We are L'Arche Canada, and we're about witnessing and sharing the gifts of all people. Learn more about us today. Join us for Scotiabank Hockey Day in Canada. Come celebrate the roots of our game and the stories that bring it to life. It starts with the Scotiabank Showcase before all seven Canadian teams hit the ice. It's lightning, flames, stars, Milan, Lucci, Leafs, Hacks, Triple Rivals, Jets, Sens, what a play, and Oilers, Canucks. McDavid scores! Scotiabank Hockey Day in Canada from Owen Sound, January 21st on Sportsnet. Don't forget to tune in to Great County Life at Home next week on Rogers. We'll be getting more information from the Blue Water Association for Lifelong Learning.
Welcome back to Great County Life at Home this week. And we have an extremely special guest today. Oh, we certainly do. But I just want to mention, we also have Charlie Brown with you, which is lovely. <laughs> and we can actually see him now against uh, the color of the couch. The multitude of so colors. Thanks. We do have a really special guest with us today, and that's Ron McLean. And he is the Canadian sports commentator and he is going to be in Owen Sound ho hosting the uh, Scotiabank Hockey Day in Canada and this is a amazing series of events coming up uh, January 18th to January 21st and Ron is going to be hosting many of the festivities but I learned a couple of things. As you know, I do a little bit of research. I learned a couple of things. And Ron McLean has won eight Gemini Awards. And that is acknowledgement in the Canadian television industry. And he also has a star on the Canadian uh, Walk of Fame. So <laughs> welcome, Ron. It is such a pleasure to meet you sort of in person. Mary Jane and Rhonda, it's uh, lovely to be with you. And, uh, you know, one thing about that Canada's Walk of Fame was Don Cherry and myself went together onto the sidewalk in downtown Toronto. And I always loved the metaphor of uh, being on the street. We have a beautiful feature uh, among the many stories we'll tell on the actual broadcast on the 21st is a story about how hockey helps the homeless. Um, but I, I loved, I was a young DJ and Casey Kasem's American Top 40. We used to play it every Saturday morning and He'd always end the show by saying, keep your feet on the ground and reach for the stars. And I love the feet on the ground, the metaphor of, uh, you know, me and the homeless are together on that street downtown Toronto. So just a strange twist on uh, maybe some humility and all all that accolade. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that is such a, a heartfelt comment because that's one of the things that I am personally very concerned about is the homeless situation we have in in our own uh, city right now and in Gray County as well. Um, so that's very near and dear to my heart. And I appreciate you making that, that comment. Thank you. But we also need to talk about the festivities that are coming up because Owen Sound is such a hockey town. Um, the hockey logos are everywhere when you walk around the streets. And I noticed you have one on your... Uh, your shirt today and I have my little snow sculpture and hockey hockey sculpture <laughs> here to to help celebrate so Ron tell us what's coming up in the next few days well, we're going to actually do a little bit of a, an event at Boston Pizza on the 17th, the Tuesday, uh, which involves Dale DeGray, the general manager of the Owen Sound Attack of the Ontario Hockey League. So that'll kind of be a launch uh, that evening. Uh, and then we roll into a series of events. There's a music concert on the Wednesday. I'll also be part of a really exciting, to me, event, which is a referees clinic uh, at 4 o'clock on the Wednesday afternoon. Uh, Kevin MacArthur will kind of help quarterback that. Fred Wallace, uh, who you know, iconic broadcaster, will help MC that. Um, but we're trying to encourage youngsters to uh, appreciate refereeing because it's uh, right now in our country, we have lots of kids who want to be the next Connor McDavid or Connor Bedard, but we don't have enough uh, youngsters taking up refereeing and that there's a bit of a shortage. So it's a beautiful vocation. I did it for a quarter century. I was a Hockey Canada level five referee and used to love going. It was almost like doing uh, Scotiabank Hockey Day in Canada or Rogers Hometown Hockey. I would traipse around uh, first Alberta and then when we moved to Ontario, I actually refereed at the Bayshore Harry Lumley Arena years ago and you learn so much uh, about managing uh, the human condition. Uh, it, you know, there's a lot of people yelling at you and there's a lot of folks with a vested interest and your job as a referee is to be like the judge. Uh, you're the uh, the impartial one in all this madness. Um, and it's a lovely bit of education for anyone. So that'll be on the Wednesday. Uh, in addition to a music concert that night, uh, Dave Bedini curates that with a lot of great artists. Then the next night there's a banquet. That's the Thursday, Friday evening. We do a charity hot hockey game and then the big show happens at the order of good cheer rink at harrison park which is a you know i'm rambling here but the, the most amazing thing about owen sound i mean it just never ends right from uh, the group of seven and tom thompson to billy bishop i mean that the history of the area is is a story at every turn the hockey history is a story at every turn but i just 
adore the idea that way back around 1888 and uh, into the turn of that century, the idea was if on even number days you wanted to skate, you could play hockey. On odd number days, sorry, on odd number days, you got to play hockey. Even number days was only for public skating or figure skating. So right back then, there was a, a push towards uh, equality and inclusion and diversity. Uh, that happened in Owen Sound before it happened anywhere in the world. Oh, well, I, I didn't realize that, but I do uh, remember um the even days and the odd days because my uh, my three sons played hockey and my uh, my husband also played hockey so it was uh um hockey was very much part of of their growing up years um, Brian coached while they played on their teams as well so um you know spent a lot of time in the, in the hockey rink one of the things that i really um I really appreciated was how the parents cheered for everyone. If you were a, if you scored or did something really well, didn't matter which team you were on, everybody cheered. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's so vital, right? And it's not always the case. You know, a lot of the times we reward uh, the youngster that scored the goal gets pizza, <laughs> you know, but if you don't score, if you don't win, you don't get to go for that pizza. So, uh, and I don't think that's the right messaging. I do think it should be, and I know people get really mad when you know what, you can't hand out medals for participation. Uh, but I do think you do that. I, I think you cultivate a love of it first. Uh, you know, what's in it for the talent is always just the joy of doing it not the outcome uh, like a like a warrior like the zen uh, art of war you know the the warrior respects the battle not the outcome so i love you know if if you get a a fan a parent a coach uh, and or a referee we're all the you know stakeholders who kind of create this uh, playing field uh, if you come at it with that heart that we call a red heart uh, that is the way you know sport has to have virtue there's no point in it otherwise. Um, it's not about conquest. It's about teaching you uh, these life skills of uh, resiliency and uh, compete. Um, but it, you know, that's great when a parent cheers uh, for for the. And this, I've seen an example of that. 1972, a very famous series happened between Canada and the Soviet Union, the Summit Series. Paul Henderson was the hero from nearby. Uh, they were in trouble, Canada. They were down. They had lost three games, won one and tied one. So they were almost out of it with three remaining games in Moscow. And at the end of the fifth game, which they blew a lead, uh, the Canadian contingent there, the fans, 2,700, all stood up and cheered for Canada, even though they'd lost the game and squandered the lead. And that was the impetus for the Canadian team to kind of rally and win the final three games led by Paul. So there's a good example of how that spirit, that karma usually works. Well, I think it's really important when um, children are learning how to work with others and to work with others well. I mean, it is competitive. And we were just recently, uh, before Christmas, we were down uh, watching our grandson play hockey. And um, once again, I noticed that the parents there cheered for all, uh, whatever skill set you excelled at, didn't matter what team you were on, the parents were cheering for that, and I didn't hear anything negative coming from it. But it's also children learning how to be a team player, whether you're on the winning team or on the on the other team that didn't win. And I don't want to use the word losing because everyone is developing skills and talents through that process. Um, and and I think we need to see that more in as youth are growing up on how to work with others and work with others well and support each other mm -hmm. uh, by uh, encouraging others rather than putting people down. Which is why, you know, as you've seen, Mary Jane, social media is all about like and dislike. And mm -hmm. the dislike can have a profound effect on the uh, psyche of a child. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a, it's a, it's all the same. The, the, uh, the whole cauldron or crucible of, uh, of you know, how we internalize, how we, we lead our lives, believing in ourselves, what someone else has on their exterior, can't be. You know, you, you're not what you're perceived to be. You, you actually are what you are, but only if what you just said, if we, if we cultivate teamwork and a, and a trust and a belief that we're all in this together. You know, these are these are lofty goals. I will say the Owen Sound Attack Little Franchise uh, has produced so many leaders that are 
uh, great in that regard. Like Ray McKelvey was a director of player personnel, the late Ray McKelvey, who brought the team here in 89. Uh, he His first two draft picks were Adam Mayer and Dan Snyder. And Dan's gone now. He perished in a car crash in Atlanta, Georgia uh, years ago. Uh, but he was just an unbelievable captain and leader and community uh, citizen. You know, if you want to produce good teams, produce good people, he was it. And they've, they've had a history of that. Mark Giordano is now a 40-year-old playing for the Toronto Maple Leafs who played at Owen Sound and great leader. Nick Suzuki is a youngster, a captain of the Montreal Canadiens, comes out of the Owen Sound attack. And I could list a million of them. But they seem to be cut from that cloth of uh, of team first, of community first. Possibly it's because uh, Owen Sound is the smallest you know city in the CHL, the Canadian Hockey League, uh, for a town of, say, 5,000 in the immediate area. Uh, to have a great franchise is, uh, is not easy. And the only way you do it is if everybody buys in and uh, does some work in the community and uh, if the community supports the team, which has all been happening at various junctures. Uh, it is great to see, and, and it'll be great to celebrate. Well, I do appreciate the fact that the the team members of the attack do participate in not-for-profit organizations in helping to support them. And I think that is just building community spirit. It is. Yeah. It, it's, uh, you know, they, there's an old saying that uh, smaller communities move at the speed of trust. Uh, and I always loved that, you know, that I think you you, you just need that to uh, pick each other up. You know, the whole, the whole, I grew up in Red Deer, Alberta. So the idea of a barn raising, everybody gathered from wherever to, to get the walls of the barn up. Um, and that's kind of how that that metaphorical wall is built. And, uh, you know, the old standard uh, takes a village. Well, the other thing, too, is it's Ron, you've had such a long career in in hockey in um, various uh, aspects of hockey, not only playing, but refereeing, coaching, and of course your commentary, which is well known um, probably all over the world. Um, what, what aspect of this, like I can see your love of hockey just in your expression. What, um, what have you taken from that um, and moved forward with it and what, what do you, you're celebrating Scotiabank Hockey Day in Canada. Um, how, where we go from here? Well, one of the things, Mary Jane, that I think is uh, is unique about hockey is that you can do it backwards. Now, figure skaters do their sport backwards, but they don't have the hands involved uh, the way we do with our stick and shooting and passing. And I just think it's the most uh, intricate, complex sport uh, and the most liberating sport. I love Michael Jordan, the basketball player, but Michael doesn't run up and down the court backwards, but we do. You know, we, we go forwards and backwards and this way and that. Uh, we do it in the... You know, I think winter, you know, the, the charm of us being, a, a, you know, Pierre Burton said two things shape you. One is uh, your topography and the other is the pull of your past. And the pull of our past is, you know, the railroad goes across the country and hockey follows. Uh, and of course, winter. Uh, we, we are a winter nation. <laughs> Although uh, this year down at least where I am in Oakville, we've had a really mild one. Knock on wood. I'm, I'm kind of watching like we all are AccuWeather like a hawk for the week uh, this week. And, and so far, you know, it flipped. Uh, there was a chance of freezing rain on Saturday, which would be lousy for our outdoor ice. Uh, but now it's looking like we might catch a break on the 21st. Anyway, uh, I just love the, I think we all do, the feel of uh, cool air in the lungs when you're on skates and how quickly you warm up. You know, in, in no time at all, in minus five, you could be wearing what I'm wearing now. And then, as I said, the, you know, uh, I mean, Billy Bishop uh, at the at the yoke, uh, I just think that, talent you know that that this guy was flying 15 years after the Wright brothers uh, I can't even imagine it uh and I can't imagine Tom Thompson and all those beautiful uh painters you know you've got that artwork behind you I I always love imagination combined with uh you know the, the intricate physical talent that's required to do these things and hockey that's where the joy comes for me is I, I just see it uh, watching that world junior hockey tournament in Moncton and Halifax and this young phenom Connor Bedard but the whole team uh, it was just can't even believe that at 17 someone can physically do what what is being done there and that's the joy well I I think um as I was watching um in my neighborhood there were 12 boys in, in four houses and and watching them play hockey and become engaged you could see you could see the light in the eyes of the the young boys who were 
really into hockey at a very, very early age. Some played for fun. My boys played for fun. That I could see, you know, one of the lads, this was his goal in life. And you could see it from the time he was six and seven, mm -hmm. that that was where he wanted to be. When he watched a game, he knew everything that was happening in that game. And you could watch the expression on his face and knew that that was going to be a life journey for him. Right. Uh, I'm amazed at, uh, like Sidney Crosby, you know, was seven years old and he was attending a hockey academy in uh, PEI. A Alan Andrews had a hockey camp there and Brad Richards, a friend of mine who played in the NHL, was an instructor at the age of 14, which is unheard of. Brad said the only reason Sidney, who was seven years younger, wasn't an instructor is that he was seven. <laughs> we couldn't justify having a seven-year-old teaching our our clinics, but he was that committed. He he was dressing like a pro. Connor McDavid was the same way. At the age of seven, he was wearing a tie to the rink, uh, you know, envisioning uh, that future. So uh, I do believe there, that's one element of it. And then the the second one, Mary Jane, that's so amazing to me mm -hmm. is uh, spatial awareness. Uh, the players who are really great at hockey because it's at warp speed have this fighter pilot uh, ability to process and see. Uh, and I, I played all my life and I maybe had that vision one of every 10 games. I used to think, you know, how is it you can do a, a broadcast or MC, you know, with the queen on Parliament Hill or close Maple Leaf Gardens, but you can't see the bloody ice. What is the matter with you? And I don't know where that gift uh, comes from and how it's cultivated. Some, you know, Gretzky, he worked at uh, improving his peripheral vision by tracing. He would watch Hockey Night in Canada with a notepad in front of him, and he would jot down uh, where the puck was at any given moment by watching the TV and hoping that he got it right on the piece of paper in front of him. That was how he worked on peripheral vision. So these kids that, you know, wow. become the, the next one, the superstar, they have that in them and it's uh but that's the gift is that command of spatial awareness well through uh, january 17th as you say your your launch date to the 21st you're going to be seeing and meeting a lot of our our avid fans um in the owen sound and gray bruce area because we are drawing from the larger community and you also have an amazing list of alumni that are coming and one of the things that i'm really really pleased to see is that the the women hockey players mm -hmm. that are coming up I mean, my granddaughter also plays hockey so I, it's so good to see this as being really well recognized as well you're, you're so right. I know we're out of time, but I'll, I'll just close by saying that Dolly Miggs is going to be kind of our, our uh, I would say, honorary ambassador because we have the OUA game happening between Waterloo and Guelph. We also have the Dream Gap Tour, it's called, where the PWHPA, where the professional women hockey players are playing a game for us at 11 o'clock. So, yeah, that's that's the new frontier that has been uh, has been conquered and it'll be a huge part of that. It's a good thing. As you know, we've got five days and the day of the show, we've got about 13 hours and we need it because you can tell there's, there's a lot going on, but thank you. Ani, I'm Carolyn King and I'm a member of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and the creator of the Moccasin Identifier. Philip Cote, an artist in Toronto here, took and redrew uh, real moccasins. We're starting over with the children. The idea is that they would research whose land their school is built on, near, or what treaty area they're in. And the educational kit that we have has all that information in there. And the children just, like, I love it. My dream is that this province will be covered with moccasin identifiers within the next decade, and they will forever know whose land they're on. That's the goal. Educate and awareness with a nice, simple little program called the Moccasin Identifier. What kind of show do you want to see on Rogers TV? What interests you? Log on to rogerstv.com, fill out a show proposal, and tell us about your segment idea. We want to know what you want to see. Rogers TV, only on Rogers. October 5th, 2014, my daughter was hit by a train. She was walking along the sides of the tracks, and it shattered her world. <laughs> Thank you. 
Welcome back to Gray County Life at Home. I've got the lovely Charlie here and Miss Mary Jane. So that was a fantastic interview with Ron McLean. And we just wanted to tell you, after we stopped shooting, I did ask Ron what he likes to do that does not involve hockey. And he did say something near and dear to I think a lot of people's hearts is cooking. He and his wife, Carrie, like to cook at home, fine cuisine. And he said, and listening to music as he's got DJing in his personal history of, of uh, being on air. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool that uh, that's what he likes to do. And I would think that the next guest, I think they maybe have done lectures on cooking. And if they haven't, maybe we could request that for the future. We <laughs> have Bob from Blue Water Association of Lifelong Learning, which is a really incredible group, Bob. Hi, welcome to Great County Life on Rogers TV. Thank you so much, uh, Mary Jane and Rhonda. And I, we'd love to have Ron McLean on as a, as a speaker. He's got some wonderful stories. So... Yeah, listen, I think we're going to approach him at some point, you know, maybe I'll go, and see, I'll go and see him when he's here in town uh, <laughs> next <Yeah>. week. <laughs> and it just rolls off of his tongue. Like he's got so yeah. much history in there. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. 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 Maybe there's something about uh, hockey and keeping the mental juices going. I would think, I would think. In the same way that what we do, we hope, keeps the mental juices going. <laughs> I think it's an amazing program. You know, it's uh, the association is a, uh, it's a huge resource for the community. Uh, my wife and I moved up here a little over three years ago. And I must tell you that one of the attractions was having this organization around. We were familiar with it because we've been coming up here for uh, vacations for about the last 40 years. We have a friend who lives uh, near Big Bay. And uh, an another neighbor of ours on this road told us about this organization ball. They bring in top-notch speakers to speak on a whole variety of areas. You're going to love it. Why don't you join us? Uh, and before too long, of course, I ended up on the board and now I'm the chair of the board, <laughs> which is the way these things go. But it You'd is... be surprised, Bob, how many stories I know <laughs> just like that. <laughs> right. But it, it is fabulous, uh, you know, and it's uh, we've got a fairly huge audience. I mean, some of our lectures last year, we got over 300 people uh, for a community of this size. That's phenomenal. And I think that speaks to the kind of work that our program committee, the people who find a lot of these speakers do, because uh, we, we try to be current and try to deal with all the issues that are relevant to people. And, and I think we've been fairly successful at that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely, Bob. Um, we've, um, my husband and I have been engaged with uh, the lectures for several yeah. years now. And it's the speakers are absolutely incredible and the range of topics. Now, can you just talk a little bit about what's coming up uh, for the sure. following season? <laughs> Well, as we get into the new year, I mean, one of the emerging issues, there are two emerging issues, actually, from a public policy standpoint, and that's the uh, the climate crisis is one, obviously, that uh, people have talked about, and the other is the healthcare system. Uh, we're going to deal with both of them. Uh, the climate series is going to start on this Thursday, that is January the 12th. The narrative that we're taking on, on that series, it, it's not going to be the doom and gloom. Uh, we were very careful when we were planning this that, you know, you can turn people off by just simply saying, you know, the fires are going to get larger, the, uh, the floods are going to get uh, bigger. What we wanted to do was bring in a, a group of people who could talk to us about the kinds of things that can be done to, in fact, mitigate the, uh, the worst impacts of this. Uh, and I think we'll be successful in doing that. This is a six part series. Uh, and we'll be starting out with uh, the former Environment Commissioner of Ontario, Diane Sachs. She'll give us the overview. Uh, there'll be a local angle to this, too. We've got uh, Linda Swanston is her name. She's Gray County's Manager of Climate. We lost your voice there for a moment, Bob. Oh, sorry. Yeah. We've also got the, the local angle on this. We've got uh, her name is uh, Linda Swanston. You may know her. She's the... Uh, the manager of climate change initiatives for the county of Gray. So she'll be speaking to us as well. So we've got an international perspective, we've got the provincial perspective, and we've got the local perspective, but everybody hopefully will come at it from the perspective of there is something we can do. 
we don't want at the end of the series for everybody to simply throw up their hands and say, well, that was pretty depressing. Uh, there's nothing we can do, and as a result, I mean, the situation will just continue. Uh, it's the same kind of approach that we're going to take with our healthcare series, which will be starting after this one ends. Uh, we know we've got difficulties. We know we've got issues with uh, healthcare in, uh, in this province, in this country, and uh, what can we do about it? So we've got some people coming in to talk about the, the healthcare crisis and, again, some of the solutions there. Uh, we've got somebody coming in talking about uh, the vaccines and the kind of research that's being done on vaccines. Uh, so that'll be exciting. So I, we're looking forward to it. We're excited about it. Uh, I know that the uh, the climate series has been, uh, we've sold a huge number of tickets for that already. So I think it's going to be another huge series, probably as big as the one that we had last year on populism, where we had over 300 and I think 320 people attend those series where we dealt with populism not only uh, in North America but throughout the world. Uh, it was a fabulous series. Um, well, Bob, in the fall there was the option of uh, logging in through Zoom yeah. or attending at the Bay Shore, yeah. and so you were able to accommodate a much larger audience that way. So yeah. now that we're in the sort of the winter season, are you re keeping up that same uh, routine or are you going back strictly to Zoom? You know, what we decided to do was for the winter season itself, that is for this series beginning on January 12th, going through, I think, to almost the end of February, decided let's do Zoom only. <laughs> Well, we took this decision before we realized that there would be no snow on the ground <laughs> in January. But the, the idea, the way. yeah, I, I think <laughs> our board recognized that, uh, you know, the winters can get pretty, uh, can get pretty difficult here. Uh, and we had a sense too, that our audience was getting used to Zoom. They were becoming very comfortable with us now. Uh, in fact, when we went to the hybrid structure, which was having it both Zoom and in person, we found that the vast majority of people were staying at home. And you can understand why, I guess. You can have a cup of coffee at home. If you haven't had your breakfast yet, you can have your breakfast while you're, while you're listening to, a, to one of the presenters. Uh, and you don't have to worry about getting yourselves downtown to the Bay Shore, which is where the lectures are held, or getting home after in case there's a storm during the lecture itself. Um, so I think that's been a big uh, transition for the organization, and I think it's worked well. It's worked really well. So we'll we'll stay Zoom for this series, and we'll go back to uh, Zoom and uh, in person, starting with the uh, series on health, and uh, leading to the spring. For those folks who have not uh, engaged in the in the ball series at all, what is the affordability? What are the fees? Well, take, let's take the example of the climate series coming up. So it's a six part series, uh, six different lectures, uh, and it is $50 for the six lectures. You compare that to going to movies, you compare that to going to a hot, it's, it's good value for the money. Mm -hmm. uh, and we don't make money at this. We, we charge what we need to charge in order to put the lecture on. There's, you know, there's usually a, a speaker fee of some sort. If we're renting the hall to have the lectures, uh, there's the hall fees, uh, coffee or whatever is put on. So we just charge enough in order for us to be able to do this. And we think the $50 is very reasonable. And you can select how many lectures you choose that you want to purchase. So you Absolutely. don't have to take the whole year series. You can just pick out the topics no. that are of interest. Right. Yeah. That's right. And occasionally we do have one-off lectures. Uh, a good example last year, and it was an example of how current we can be on issues. The, uh, in fact, we were having one of our lectures, it was a Thursday in January, and the war had just begun in the Ukraine. Okay. Um, so by the time we finished the presentation at noon, there were stories all over the world about the fact that the uh, Russians had invaded the Ukraine. Somebody on our planning committee happened to know a uh, professor who had spent some time in the Ukraine, in the very areas where the fighting was taking place. Uh, we thought, well, it would be good for us to, to bring that individual in as soon as we can, just to provide people with the context. You're going to be reading a lot about this in the next couple of months, as it turns out, in the next 12, 13 months. And we can, we can get somebody in here who can tell us, you know, some of the background. 
you know, what was it behind Putin's thinking? What was it behind the uh, Ukrainians thinking on this thing? Uh, so I think within four days of the, uh, the war being started, we had the special lecture. And again, it was, uh, it was a huge success. A lot of people came to it um, and it was very current. It was very current. So we do a combination of things. Let's stay current with the issues and uh, certainly the series of issues uh, we do as well. Because we want to make sure that we cover all angles of it. What I have found in our community is that um, our, um, I would say, senior population, and I believe your age range is around 50 to, and upwards. We tend to skew yeah. Yeah, um, to towards the older crowd. Yeah. Yes. And, and the really dispelling the myth that older folks are um, not sort of interested in what's going on around them other oh. than playing cards. Our community is so engaged um, in terms of intellectual uh, lectures. Like we want to know the facts and we want to know the realities and we also want to know what's being done. And the curiosity of this generation that we have in, in Owen Sound is astounding. The questions that they ask at the end of the lecture I was just going to say, uh, I moderate most of the lectures, and uh, you know, a moderator is always concerned: uh, will there be enough questions at the end? Because we do set some time aside. We don't want just that to be a quiet period. But my God, the list of questioners is huge, and the uh, yeah, the breadth of questions is amazing, and and, and the background that people bring to this stuff it, it is incredible as well. So you're right; it, it's a very intelligent audience. And which is why I suspect over 20 years ago that there was this group of people who sat down and said, we'd like to continue our education. We don't necessarily want to do it in a, uh, in a formal setting like a school. So why don't we do something like put on lectures? <laughs> and what a great idea that was. And over 20 years, it's, it's grown. Uh, it certainly hasn't gotten any smaller. It's grown. It's become more and more popular. And I think we're starting, we're starting to draw in a somewhat younger audience as well, which makes sense. Because at some point they will be old too. <laughs> so, I was going to say, Bob, I mean, we all get there eventually, right? Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a reality. Yeah, I think the fact that you're doing them on Zoom as well as live and in person, um, it make, makes it more available to more people because I remember you know, you only had a set space available yeah. at one time. So I, I think that's fantastic that there's no closed doors here. No, and what we've seen, it's interesting. Occasionally we gauge to see where the uh, where the viewers are from. Uh, and you can do that. And uh, we've got people from all over the province. Not surprising. You mm -hmm. know, there's somebody here in Owen Sound. Uh, a lot of us come from another part of the province, so we have friends in those parts of the province, and we'll say, you know, we're doing this environment series. Uh, why don't you tune in? If you want to buy tickets, go to the website. Uh, it's easy enough to do, and uh, people are doing that. So, yeah, the word is spreading that way, too, and I think it, it, it is perfect. Yeah. yeah, and you're offsetting your uh, your carbon footprint by having some of your speakers doing this fully online it is brilliant. Yeah, it works really well. Uh, we were pleasantly surprised that there is such great acceptance to this to this new technology that we're all using now. You know, when it first started and when we first all started on Zoom, everybody thought, oh my God, you know, which buttons do you have to push? How do you adjust your screen? What do you have in the background? What don't you do? What should be wearing? <laughs> you would be wearing your pants or not? Uh, it didn't take long for people to get very, very comfortable with it. Uh, yeah. And it's yeah. been great. As Vera Jane says, we are very flexible and we do, uh, well, here on Rogers, we fly by the seat of our pants most of the time, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we do too, we do too. Because uh, you can imagine, there's you set up a series and occasionally someone will say, oops, I can't make it. <laughs> no. uh, and, and you scramble, and uh, our program planning committee is very good at that. Uh, we, it's, it's a good group of people uh, who have a lot of contacts everywhere. That's what this is all about for us as well. You know, people always say, how do you get these people? Well, we have a lot of contacts. 
so and so knows so and so who goes so and so. <laughs> and well, can you give them a call? And uh, they do, and they uh, they end up uh, as a as a guest speaker. And they love coming to Owen Sound too. These folks, you know, they really do. That's awesome. Then we yeah. can draw more people. Yeah, absolutely. That's absolutely. good. Yeah. 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 They, how do you go about signing up for a course if you want to? I know okay. that I went online today, and the next one, the uh, health services one, isn't available yet. So no. I, obviously there's a window there. There's a window because we don't want to complicate matters for ourselves in terms of uh, juggling ticket sales. So that will be on sale. We'll probably put that on sale about uh, a week or so before the next, this series ends. But if people want to know about the association, uh, we've got a terrific website. It's Blue Water Learns. That's one word, bluewaterlearns.com. And they can go onto the site and they'll get everything they need about who, we're, who we are, what we do, the kinds of lectures we do, some of the stuff we've done in the past. And then if you want to buy tickets, that's easy enough to do as well. Uh, you log in, you see what, you, what it is you want to buy. Uh, you can use your credit card to pay now, uh, which you know is a, is a good thing, obviously. Uh, and away you go. And then you can make a decision as to whether uh, you attend live or you uh, stay at home, have your coffee in your door or whatever at home. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's very accessible, very accessible. One of the things that I appreciate about the, uh, the variety of topics that you have, you have some that are uh, really serious topics like climate change and healthcare, but yeah. I thoroughly enjoyed the one on the movies. Like the movie, yeah, the movies was the great. Movies was, yeah. That's right. And so yeah. we, you have this wide range of topics. So some of them are heavy, and then some of them are much lighter and more of an interest. The the other light one that we did last year, it was a one off. It was on puzzles. I did. I was there. In fact, I'm using some of those at Christmas yeah. time with my children because we learned so many uh, techniques about puzzles. Well, I must tell you, Mary Jane, you might remember from that particular lecture that I said to the lecturer, I said, you know what? I have to be very honest here. I'm not into puzzles. For whatever reason, I don't do puzzles. That lecture, and this is the honest to God truth, I'm now doing puzzles. <laughs> you know, but my wife is astounded that this is the case, you know. She said, you said, you know, a few months go. ago, you never do puzzles. I said, yeah, but um, he, made, he made it interesting. Well, thank well, you so much, Bob, for coming on today. We, Yeah, we, we're on to the next guest. Sorry, we, we've run out of time, but definitely get into bluewaterlearns.com. Bluewaterlearns, yeah, one word, dot com. And that gets you to the website. Are you the type who would keep going or stop? It's not easy to stop when you have an addiction. Legalizing cannabis won't stop addiction. It trivializes its consumption. Let's be vigilant. If you need help, visit portage.ca. You're so right. Zach has terrible takes. I know, right? Like, legit. Everyone makes one of my takes, just because I wanted to be bold and just throw myself out there. But, uh, also, I got to apologize quickly. Yeah. I can't come back next season. Live Golf has paid me $50 million to do their sports rap show. <laughs> the Jays do not make the playoffs. That's it. That. I'm leaving. That's when Odell Beckham Jr. will be donning the green and yellow.
still. Welcome back to Great County Life at Home for one of our favorite segments, Adorable Adoptables with Renee from the Animal Shelter. And Miss Renee, this little guest looks a lot quieter than last week's guest. Absolutely. <laughs> and thank thank goodness for that. I mean, in saying that, um, that wonderful puppy did get a home. So hooray oh. and good and good luck to those people, right? Um, this little <laughs> lady is the opposite of that busy, active dog um her name is chanel and chanel is a five month old spayed female kitten who is learning to like things um chanel came to us as a street cat um so she was afraid of people she was afraid of dogs and cats but as you can see she's sitting here just fine so we've done some work with her she's still a little grumbly she still makes um angry face at me and i think she's making an angry face at me right now yeah you are um <laughs> but in saying that i mean she's coming along and she would absolutely fit um in any place with a bit of work a little bit of tlc um but if you wanted to make things easier on her um a quieter older or quieter home would be best now in saying that we have put her right out front at the animal shelter in the we call it the communal area in which there's all sorts of action happening so that she can learn um you know to hear the toilet flush for example or hear the microwave or to hear the dogs barking you know things that she needs to learn and she's doing pretty good with it. Um, she's not afraid anymore. She's still rolling around and play with things um, while all of that commotion is going on. So it's not impossible for her to fit in a busy household. It's just going to take a little bit of time. This is the cat that um, is going to hide under your couch. She's going to want um, her own special little space. Um, we are, as everybody knows, a no-kill shelter. And when we have... Um, we're going to call them feral. She wasn't necessarily feral. She came to us in a carrying cage. Somebody picked her up, so not wild. But when we have cats that are a little on the shyer side, they're with us a little bit longer. Well, we try to make them house cats, which is the ideal world for, for them to be in. Um, and she's been with us about a month and a half, which did give her the opportunity to be spayed. So a good advantage for somebody looking for something young who doesn't want to have to do that. It's been done. Um, she also has had lots of vaccines and dewormings and defleeing, so all of her vet stuff is right up to date. You are you're not even looking at it, are you? You're like, I'm just going to pretend it's not here. I don't think she's ever she's never been on TV before, and she's definitely <laughs> probably not had a cell phone pop in her face before. <laughs> but she's going to be a beautiful cat once she learns how to be a cat. She's gonna she's gonna be awesome, aren't you? You're gonna be awesome. So she Rena, I'm, quite, I'm quite curious if when you call her a street cat, would yep. she not have been acclimatized to people and traffic and other environmental, like she seems to have been in this little bubble where she hasn't learned to be. Yeah. She was living in someone's um, garage. So I suspect she spent, I mean, she's only five months old, so she would have spent her little tiny days in there. Um, then the weather changed and that's how she ended up here. Oh, so wow. in saying that, I don't, I think they were trying to teach her to be a cat. Um, they were feeding her and touching her. As I said, she came in in a carrying cage, not a, not a trap. So, I mean, She's getting there. It's just, a, it takes a little bit longer for some of them. Um, we're often, you know, in a situation where we see kittens that have been raised in a home or they've been raised here at the shelter. Not the case for this little one, but it, but it's okay. You're going to be a lovely cat anyway. I mean, for her to sit here quietly like this is amazing. Right? Well, she certainly suits the name Chanel. I mean, she's absolutely <laughs> beautiful. She is. She is. Yes, I like the little dark spot on her nose. Yes, <laughs> yeah. that's you they're talking to. What do you think of that idea? She's like, this is weird. It is weird, isn't it? <laughs> Sometimes I think an animal that uh, like her that's been outside quite a bit like that or and maybe struggled a bit, uh, they have a big appreciation for a warm, safe place. They sure do. And she loves cats, um, would thrive in a home with a cat. She could kind of lean on for support and to teach her to, to be a cat. 
um, here at the shelter, which is again, she's in this communal kind of area. She spends most of her time following the other cats around. So perhaps you were somebody who needs a buddy for your cat, or you have a senior cat and, and you're looking to transition into something younger. This would be a good choice for that, right? Because you need that and they need you. Yeah. <laughs> she's just going to, she's just going to continue to make grumpy face. Yeah. <laughs> grumpy face it is. <laughs> Ah, oh, she's lovely. Yeah, she is. And as I said, she's so young. I mean, being only five months old, it's not a big deal for her. She doesn't really know life that long on the streets. And it's funny to say that. She's not been a street girl forever, just a, a little while. Um, and it and it will pass. People often, you know, are worried about, you know, oh, I have this feral cat and is it going to be on the streets? And the reality is no. In most cases, after they're they're fixed, especially, we see them turn into lovely little cats. Yep. Yeah, we do. And so she is going to be comfortable being like a house cat as opposed to one that's roaming. Absolutely. We want in the ideal world, we want all cats to be house cats because their life expectancy is so much better. Um, they're also it's also healthier for us too, and we don't talk about that very often. But a, a cat that goes outside runs a risk of bringing things home, um, like parasites and, you know, fleas and all those kind of things, um, as well as illness and disease, right? So it is better for her owners to keep her in. It's also better for her to be in. Um, it's just a quieter home will be an easier transition for her. That's all. That's all. Mm -hmm. No big deal. Can I let go of your feet? Does that make you more comfortable? Gosh, she's cute, though. She is. She's beautiful. And it seems like she she probably would rather enjoy having a lap to sit on while you're watching a movie. I agree. I mean, she's she seems to be quite interested in this show. Eh? <laughs> well, she's got good taste, Renee. <laughs> I agree. I agree. And again, it's an opportunity for, if somebody wants something younger to take something that has had its vetting done. That's the big selling feature for her. Um, quite often, we have older cats that are fixed, not so many of the younger ones. And in her case, what are you making grumpy face? You were fixed. Didn't you know that? You didn't know that. Surprise. Like, Surprise. <laughs> Surprise. Surprise. <laughs> well, not impressed at all. No, no, it's okay. Well, I'll have to I tell you, you we did, uh, we opened up Charlie's Christmas present from the shelter, the sock with the food and the treats in it, and he went out of his mind, loved Yay. the presents. I yes, love it. And, yeah. Very happy boy. Well, but thanks, Renee, for coming on and bringing Miss Chanel, which is one of my favorite scents, i got to say, Chanel number five. So, yep. yeah, I wish her the best of luck. And we will see everybody next week on Gray County Life at home again next week. Have a great week. the rogers tv viewer response line email us or connect with us on social media i did it i need it here i gave it and I am alive. As an organ donor, you can save up to eight lives and enhance the lives of 75 others. Please go to our website. Pledge a gift of life. You'll be glad you did. Join us for Scotiabank Hockey Day in Canada. Come celebrate the roots of our game and the stories that bring it to life. It starts with the Scotiabank Show.